Hi everyone, how are you doing today? Today, Tati has released the second product for Halo Beauty and yes, it is another supplement. It is called the Kiwi Seed Skin Booster. It costs you $29.95 for a 30-day supply unlike its predecessor, the Hair, Skin and Nail Booster, which costed $39.95 for a 30-day supply. In this case, you need to take only one pill a day, which is a huge positive compared to the two that you had to take with the previous one. If you look at the ingredient list, you'll see that this newer supplement has significantly lesser number of ingredients as well. Out of the 14 ingredients that it has, 11 are the same as that on the ingredient list for the previous supplement and there are three brand new ones. In this video, I'm going to focus more on these new ingredients. We'll kind of breeze through the common ingredients, but if you want to know more about those ingredients, they are covered in my previous videos. Those videos are linked in the description box below and the ingredients that are, that are covered in each video are listed on the thumbnails. So you can just refer back to those. But for now, let's quickly go over the common ingredients. I have how many like almost 11 pages of notes front and back here so i will be referring to my notebook because you know i'm no genius i need to reread what i have written here so you know excuse me if you find me kind of constantly looking down all right so the first ingredient is vitamin d3 vitamin d3 is required for skin cell growth repair and metabolism it optimizes skin's immune system and repair now we need to supplement vitamin D3 because the natural way our body generates it is through sun exposure. But sun exposure is also linked to skin cancer and early skin aging and we don't want that. Vitamins B1, B2 and B6 also known as thiamine, riboflavin and vitamins. They help in increasing the lifespan of cells. They reduce inflammation, prevent dry skin, reduce redness, scaliness and other skin irritations. Zinc, it aids in DNA repair, it prevents collagen loss, it aids in biosynthesis of new collagen, and it also aids in elimination of old or damaged collagen. Rosy powder extract has high levels of antioxidants. It's very high in vitamin C, E, A, and D. It has natural anti-inflammatory properties. It improves collagen. It is shown to reduce wrinkles, and it also improves the barrier properties of the skin. MSM has antioxidant properties and it has also been shown to increase cell permeability so that the other beneficial ingredients that we are adding into our body can enter the cells. Gooseberry is supposed to be a good source of skin benefiting vitamins C and A. It is high in antioxidants, calcium and carotenes and it is considered a superfood in Ayurveda and ancient Indian science. Grape seed extract is high in bioflavonoids and antioxidants and it reduces and reverses wrinkles. Ceramide Rx is a brand name for rice ceramide and it has been shown to improve skin's hydration by increasing water content and improve on the barrier function of the skin. Asaxanthin is protective against UVA and UVB related skin lesions. It reduces wrinkles and improves skin's smoothness, hydration and elasticity. So those were the common ingredients between the hair, skin and nail booster and the Kiwi Seed Skin Booster. If you want more information, as I said before, the previous videos are linked in the description box below. Now let's look at the new ingredients. The first new ingredient is called bromelain and there is 100 milligrams in here. Bromelain is a compound that is synthesized from pineapple. It's mainly synthesized from the stem and unripened fruit of pineapple and it is a potent anti-inflammatory. It can prevent blood clots, edema and swelling. So in beauty terms, it's going to reduce puffiness. It has been shown to be protective against metastasis and spread of tumor cells in preclinical studies and also cause necrosis or cell death of tumor cells by increasing the production of specific enzymes. It is used as a debrading agent in burn victims and in clinical examples it has been shown to promote scar-free healing of deep second degree burns whereas the traditional treatment for superficial second degree burns has resulted in significant scarring. So in terms of beauty this might translate to smoother softer skin. It has also been shown to be effective in wound healing and reduced scarring when taken orally. Bromelain taken in high dosages over the period of just six days has been shown to have significant improvement in episiotomy wound healing with lesser pain but the significance of the effect has also been shown to be dose related. Now the study that has shown significant difference the patients were given 900 milligrams per day. Here we are looking at 100 milligrams per day but again the study patients took it only for six days so I don't know if there is kind of a 
cumulative effect that you take smaller amount over longer periods of time and it does kind of a slower more smoother action i don't know that's all i'm saying they, it might be i just don't know about it bromelain and pineapple in general also have antimicrobial effects and pineapple is actually used as a remedy for stomach worms yes gross but effective. The next ingredient is quercetin 40 milligrams. It is a bioflavonoid. It is found in red wine, onions, green tea, apple, berries, ginkgo biloba, buckwheat tea to name a few. It is an antioxidant and it basically reduces oxidative damage. Kiwi RX which seems to be a brand name for the kiwi seed extract 50 s to 1 is explained on the Halo Beauty website as if you take 50 parts of the raw material, you end up with one part of the final concentrated extract. Kiwi seed extract in general is supposed to have phenolic components. I did not find too much research on kiwi seed extract in general in PubMed. However, I did find a document by Orisa Oil and Fat Chemical Corporation Limited, and it's the same company that I had found the rice ceramide documentation for, for the ceramide RX, where I had actually found the matching graphs and representations. So I'm guessing they probably are, you know, either the innovators or the suppliers for Halo Beauty for the kiwi seed extract as well. This documentation is more like a list of preliminary studies or almost like an application for a grant where you submit smaller studies to get a bigger grant to do further research. So most of these results I'm going to mention here are based on mainly in vitro and some animal studies and there are these really, really small human studies. This document lists the benefits of kiwi seed extract as it's inhibitory towards P. acne bacteria thought to be responsible for human acne. It is also inhibitory towards production of dehydroxytestosterone or DHT by inhibition of 5-alpha reductase. It is also supposed to reduce sebum production without affecting the moisture content of the skin. It is supposed to have anti-wrinkle properties. This document reports that the total area of wrinkles around the corner of the eye reduced and in an in vitro study it was promoting growth of fibroblasts. TV seed extract is supposed to balance pH. It also supposed to reduce under eye dark darkness in a dose dependent manner by inhibiting tyrosinase and by blocking B16 melanoma cells and reducing the production of melanin. The document reports reduction in hyperpigmentation that might be a result of exposure to UV light in guinea pigs. It also reports anti-inflammatory properties of the kiwi seed extract and it reports that in animal studies it had a pain relieving effect in acute inflammation. Now as I said before most of these results are from in vitro studies especially the ones with report increase in fibroblast or inhibition of alpha reductase or reduction in melanin. The other ones are animal studies either done in guinea pigs or rats and the human studies are really really small. They are about four to ten subjects each. In real science it really wouldn't stand any ground but you know sometimes you can use reports from such studies to kind of form your opinions on your hypotheses but actually by looking at the plots that are presented here I do not agree with some of their reports because to me it actually looks like there really wasn't any change and just be aware that I'm only talking about this one document I found from this one company I'm not talking about Halo Beauty I would have ideally liked to see a bigger human study but as I said before I actually did not find much research on effects of kiwi seed extract on skin in PubMed basically what I found is that it has a high phenolic content however the total phenolic content was still lesser than grape seed extract but here we are using the kiwi seed extract in conjunction with the grape seed extract now the halo beauty website also says that it has a ph balancing effect again i did not find any information linking kiwi seed extract to ph balancing however the kiwi fruit in itself is supposed to be very acidic in nature similar to lemons however really ripe kiwi fruit in a stage like just before spoiling is supposed to have alkalinizing effect on our body and in general alkalinizing is supposed to be anti-aging for our body but overall in general flavonoids and phenolic compounds are supposed to be antioxidant anti-inflammatory anti-carcinogenic anti-mutagenic basically which means they are going to kind of fight against agents that cause mutation in your dna so they are kind of protective towards our dna so overall, I feel like in this supplement, you're getting more of the antioxidants and flavonoids and the phenolic content and kind of the controversial ingredients from the previous hair, skin and nail booster have been removed. For example, biotin, saw palmetto, horsetail and catalase caused a lot of uproar when the last supplement got released. 
And I did mention in my own video that Sao Palmetto Horsetail and Catlays kind of made me feel uneasy recommending this supplement just to general masses. In general, before taking any supplement, it's always good to check with your physicians and kind of run the ingredient list by them just to kind of eliminate any possible interactions that could be bad for you. Now, Biotin, you guys actually brought to my attention that it did not work with a lot of you. It caused you guys to break out and a lot of people did not like Biotin. She just has eliminated those ingredients from this pill. So I think it's really smart on her part to kind of come up with a pill that boasts more antioxidants, but at the same time doesn't have those controversial ingredients. Now let's talk about which of these you should take the cost and whether you can take both the supplements simultaneously or not. First of all, if you're allergic to biotin, the choice is already made for you. If you don't like any of the controversial ingredients like the saw palmetto, horsetail, or catalase, the choice is made for you. You can only go for the kiwi seed extract. Now these supplements cost $40 a month or $30 a month. If that is in your budget, I would say go for it because as I said in my previous video, if you try to get these ingredients as individual supplements or even getting them from a bowl of Lucky Charms, it's going to cost you way more per month. So in that way, $40 a month is not really bad if you think these ingredients are going to help you and, if, and you can afford it. Now, in terms of whether you can take both, we will not go over the accepted daily value of any of these ingredients if you were to take both supplements. For example, you're supposed to be all right taking zinc up to 40 milligrams per day. If you take both the supplements, you're at 20 milligrams. Vitamin D3 has been shown to be safe up until the dosages of 10,000 international units per day. If you take both the supplements, you're getting only 2,000 and so on and so forth. So you're perfectly fine taking both the supplements if you can afford $70 a month for just supplements each and every month. But if you can afford it, go for it, right? Let me know in the comments below what you guys think if you're happy with this newer formulation. I personally think that she has done a good job listening to her viewers. So congratulations, Tati. I think this launch went much better than what happened last time. I was still hoping for some skincare stuff, a juicy kiwi-based mask or something, but I think you have done good. So congratulations again. Anyways, thank you again for joining me, guys. I have not watched Tati's release video. So after watching that, if I have any updates, if I learn any more information, I will update you guys in a future video. If you are new to my channel, make sure to subscribe and hit the little notification bell so that you'll be informed of my future videos. If you have any ingredients that you want me to research, leave them in the comments below. I would definitely love to do that. I have a few on my list. I have a few videos that I've already done, but I now need to re-record because it's been a while. I have done videos on biotin. I still need to research probiotics and a few other ingredients you guys have suggested in the past. So thank you again for all the support. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.